Hey guys, I just wanted to go over how I wired up my, my LEDs in case anybody was interested in doing something similar or the same. Um, so what we have here is I have two separate sets of LEDs wired, wired independently. So I have this first set here, the landing lights and the cob rings uh, where the motors are. And then I have my wingtip and tail LEDs wired up separately. Okay, so for the wingtips and the tail, what I am using are the Flytron Strobon V2 LEDs. The LEDs come on on these boards right here. What I did was I unsoldered the LEDs from the boards and just ran wires uh, out to the LEDs here. Just cut a little bit of foam off, hot glued up, hot, put some hot glue around to try and keep the shape, um, and then painted them to tried to paint them to match. So it looks somewhat decent. Uh, just used my soldering iron, made some little trenches there to, to run the wires, um, carved out these areas with my soldering iron, and then just taped over it flat. You can see um, the connections of these, these boards. It's a positive, negative, and a signal that I just ran from one to the other, and then one set out. So you end up with just one, one set of three wires that I just used a regular servo end on. Um, and that's how I connected those. Uh, as far as the Strobon V2s, you can look this up on Flytron site. They have five different flashes. You can see, you can see those two little, you can see the two little pads right there, right at, right at the back right there. When you jump those, you, it takes you to a different flash cycle. Um, you, you can also, I hook these right up to my receiver, which is six volts. Uh, and what the signal wire does on these is it allows uh, you to turn them on and off, and it also uh, lets the strobe sync. So if you have multiple LEDs that are that are strobing on these boards, they'll all sync up. So I just did that on each wingtip. That would be four of the LEDs. So what you have is you have a single set of three wires coming from from uh, the right wingtip, a single set of wires coming from the left wing tip. They meet right here. I soldered them together and then soldered another three wires uh, to those and then brought a single set towards the rear here where my receiver is and where my last set of two LEDs are. Uh, if we go to the back here, there's my, my red LED there on the top. There's a blue LED in the tail. And if we look inside here, you can see You can see right there where there's the two Strobon V2 boards. I just wired them all together, put some heat shrink on them, and then uh, attached and just kind of heat shrunk them together so it was a nice little uh, tidy unit there. And then I just used double-sided tape and stuck them to the side of the fuselage. And then, so what you end up with is, you got my last connection here that goes to... Uh, channel 4 on my Dragon Link receiver. And so basically all you're doing is you're connecting all your V2 board or all your uh, Flytron Strobon V2 boards together uh, and you're connecting them in parallel. Connecting all the positives together, all the negatives together, and all the signal wires together. And then the LEDs, you just connect to each end the positive and negative to each individual board. So six LEDs, six strobe on boards, and then the positive negative signal from each strobe on board connects parallel to, to all the other strobe on boards, and then to the receiver. And obviously, you just configure as normal for your on and off, and that's that. And then, like I showed you before, you have I have this set of landing lights that's that's separate. So what we have here is <clears throat> these are all Strobon or uh, Flytron products. They're individual three watt LEDs with that lens cover and a heat sink on the on the back of each LED because they do get hot. Uh, they do get hot enough to melt hot glue. So I I epoxied them all in there. 
I will not turn these on probably unless it's for a short period of time, you know, 15 seconds here, 15 seconds there. Uh, but otherwise, they won't turn on until I'm actually in the air flying uh, for when I want to use them. Uh, see you flying. Uh, designed these. I believe I believe he, he designed these. I know he, he definitely uh, was part of the design, if not the designer of these, and he also printed these for me. Uh, so that was CU Flying uh, from RC Groups and did a really nice job. As you can see, I was just talking about the heat. That's a functional uh, air intake scoop right there underneath and then functional um, outlets, air outlets right there for the top. So I don't think there's going to be any problem whatsoever with heat on these lights when it's flying. Should not be an issue at all. Uh, they turned out really good. I actually cut into the wing. Um, obviously, and put that whole light assembly in there. It took a while, um, but I think it turned out nice. I think it was worth it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I build another plane, if I will ever go to the lengths I did to put LEDs in it again. This was very time-consuming, um, but I think I think it did turn out really well. I'm really happy with the finished product. So, <clears throat> excuse me, what you have... Is you connect all those out, you connect those three, three watt LEDs in series, and it goes to a Flytron LED driver that's that's small and it's tucked in there, um, and it's it's got a pretty good voltage range. You'll have to look at Flytron's site exactly. I forget off the top of my head, but it's something like nine volts to twenty something volts, or it's something crazy like that. It's pretty wide range, um, and so what you end up with is a positive and negative off of that that LED driver. Um, then you come over here to these cob ring LEDs. These are on eBay for like 14 or 15 bucks. It has its own little driver included with it that's connected to it. Uh, I believe the voltage range on these is is pretty good too, like 9 to 28 or some 9 to 28 volts or something like that. You'd have to look them up depending on um, if you know if you decide to buy these. Look it up on on the eBay site you're buying it from. Um, but then what I did was on each side I connected. Um, the positive and negative to here in parallel with the positive and negative uh, to here and solder them together and then soldered a single uh, pair or single yeah a single pair of positive and negatives that run to the middle then once I got to the middle I obviously had another pair of positive and negatives that came over to here from the other side same thing soldered those together soldered a single uh, a, one pair of or one a positive and I don't think I'm saying that right I soldered a positive and negative to those so you end up with one positive and one negative and in case I said that wrong I end up with a positive and negative here a positive and negative here solder them together solder a positive and negative to those and then you have a single one positive and one negative running back to wherever you want it that will power um, all four of your LED sets there. I hope I didn't confuse you. I don't think I was saying that quite right, but it's Friday. Okay. So then what I did, since that voltage range is so great, you obviously can't plug it right into your your receiver. So what I used was a, a, a Turnigy, I guess you call it a an electronic relay, I think it might be what they call it. But if you if you Google or, or look up um, the part, it's a, it's a, just look up Turnigy electronic relay, and I think you'll find it. It's just that little that little piece right there. <coughs> Sorry. That little electronic device right there. And all that does is it acts like an electronic light switch. You plug it into your receiver. You can see the line that I have running right there. Just goes into one of the channels on my Dragon Link receiver, uh, and that, and then what it has is is it just has the positive flowing through it, and it can electronically turn that on and off uh, via an electronic relay. I just made a little harness right here. So what I have is I have the negative wire coming from uh, those LEDs. The single negative wire comes up here and connects directly to. Uh, the main battery pack. Nothing special there. And if you wanted to, they'd obviously be on all the time, but you could connect the positive directly to the main battery pack too, and then when you plug in your power, your lights are just always on. I did not want that. So then what I do 
is you just take your positive and instead of running directly to the battery you run it into and out of that relay so your your LED positive goes into the relay and your your re, the uh, the positive comes out of the relay and directly into your your battery just, again just like uh just like your regular switch in your house you're breaking the hot that's all you're doing and you're just adding the electronic control to turn it on and off instead of an actual mechanical switch and that's it configure it like you normally would for for lights or anything else you hook up to your any other accessories or anything you hook up to your receiver and bam felt like emerald there for a second good old emerald bam <laughs> and so there's that set of LEDs obviously if I had that wing connected those would be lit too and for the other set of LEDs <clears throat> Those can be controlled separately. And if you look really close, I can't remember if I said that this at the beginning of the video or not, but if you look really close, I know I had talked about um, the LEDs syncing up. If you look really close, even that rotating beacon strobe on the top of the tail, you can see that it's actually synced up with how the other two strobes are, are flashing. And that's it. That's how I that's how I wired those up. Obviously, uh, the camera's washing out these lights. They they obviously don't look all washed out like this. They're very clear and defined and look really good um, when you're not looking at it through this video. Looks really nice. I wish I had a way to to get a picture of them, how I can see them right now. It's it's pretty tight. So and um since I have, have just a little extra time here, I'll just show you real quick in case anybody is just interested in how things were done. Might help somebody out in the future that isn't exactly sure how to do do something. This is how I did my Propan V2 2.1, actually. Um, I got a tip. I forget where I got the tip from. It was on a build video somewhere. Um, but they actually put um, hot glue all down here and then on the back that's gonna touch the battery and what that does is it keeps the battery from sliding I thought it was a great idea and when the hot glue is really good and and dry it works great it doesn't stick to the battery or anything but it provides a great anti-slip on the battery it's awesome I use it in any application that I have a battery that can slide around now I put a little bit of hot glue underneath of it a little bit of hot glue on the uh, on the velcro straps it works great um, there's where I mounted my VTX just some hot glue around it. Um, I do occasionally like to go go up in the clouds. There's a little moisture there, so I since that's right in the front there, what I did was I kind of just gooped goop some hot glue there, being capable, being careful to keep it out outside, but sealed it up there just to try and keep a little water water resistant as much as I can. Um, then there's a vector. And just the wiring and everything and here's here's just kind of how I cable managed everything obviously a lot of this is not necessary and it took me a lot of extra time to do this but <clears throat> I do not like the cold I live in western New York it is cold here in the winter um, I don't like to fly in the cold uh, so winter is when I I do a lot of my projects and a lot of my builds and fixing things up so with this build, I had a penguin before. I decided I wanted to build this MTD. Um, I just really wanted to take my time. I had all winter to do it, uh, and so that's what I did. I just this was supposed to be a slow, meticulous, you know, try and make it as nice and clean as I can uh, build. So you can see my my BEC right there, the Castle Creations BEC that I have set right there. I have that set to six volts, uh, powering my receiver. Uh, again, there's that Turnigy electronic relay right there there's the vector voltage regulator and the battery down there 21 amp battery um, 
and that's about it. So that's how I wired up my LEDs and everything and, and some of my cable management. So I hope that helps somebody. Hope you enjoyed it, uh, and thanks for watching.